Assalamu alaikum dear students. We believe you must be enjoying your studies, those of physics in particular. This time we shall discuss mechanics and in this topic let us look into projectile and circular motion. Before going into details and the mathematics involved, let us understand that why we study projectile and circular motion, how it is so significant for us. Yes, the answer is equally vital. Have you ever thought that the smallest and the biggest systems in the universe are based on projectile motion? Chemistry tells that an atom is the smallest unit of matter. And you definitely know that in an atom, electrons revolve in a circle around the nucleus. And similarly, the biggest system of universe, stars, Millions in number and galaxies are continuously moving in orbits to sustain phenomena of life. Many games display projectile-like movements. Machines in all industries help produce products of daily use. Means of communications all around the globe keep everybody in run. This is a result of movement of wheel or perhaps the most extraordinary invention man has ever made. Dear students, now come to the specific business. In this program, we shall discuss equations of projectile, they are used to find, trajectory of projectile, time of flight, maximum height and range of projectile. And in circular motion, we shall look into angular velocity and acceleration, and applications of centripetal force and centrifugal force. Let us begin. Can you think what is projectile and projectile motion? Please closely watch some interesting events. Well done. Look carefully at the motion of man. From this point to this one. Again, see the jump from this point to this. Also note the motion of football kicked and landing point. You notice that in all events, the objects moved on a specific path freely, but only under the action of gravity. Well, this is the moment to clearly understand the difference between projectile motion and motion because of the mechanism of propulsion. Watch motion of the rocket. It moves vertically and then on a curved path. When neither is it a projectile nor projectile motion. The thrust of hot gases backward provides a mechanism of propulsion in this case. Please just recall Newton's third law of motion, of action and reaction. Another example. Can you tell which one among the aircraft and bombs is projectile and which is not? I mean aircraft and bombs. Yes, perhaps you get the point. Bombs are projectiles because of free movement in air, but aircraft follows the law of action and reaction. Dear students, mathematics plays key role in all the sciences, especially physics. You will wonder how mathematics helps to solve the problems of projectile motion. Well, first we shall discuss four equations and then we'll apply them to find out some quantities of projectile like trajectory, time of flight, range and maximum height. Let us have details. Welcome. First we differentiate between projectile and projectile motion. A projectile is an object which moves freely under the action of gravity in two dimension having no mechanism of propulsion. Now to understand projectile motion, let us have a look at the football game. Kicked and the ball travels along two paths. I mean horizontal axis and vertical axis. But observe carefully, when ball reaches at the highest point C, its vertical component of velocity Vy is zero because it does not move upward further. But horizontal component Vx 
continues at the constant speed. So what is your observation about the horizontal component of velocity Vx? Yes, it remains constant throughout the flight. What about Vy? It has maximum value at the launching point A, decreases with time, becomes zero at the highest point and then increases while its movement downward. So how you will define projectile motion? A type of motion in which horizontal component of velocity remains constant throughout the flight whereas vertical component of velocity changes with time is known as projectile motion. Now we take up equations which we use to solve different problems of projectile motion. These are distance s is equal to initial velocity vi multiplied by t plus half into acceleration a into t square. Final velocity vf is equal to initial velocity vi plus acceleration a multiplied by time t. First take equation 1 and for its horizontal direction we replace distance s by x the horizontal displacement vertical velocity vi by vix and acceleration a by ax. Therefore, velocity equation 1 takes the form x is equal to vix into t plus half ax into t square. Please recall your program on scalar and vectors where you learned that magnitude of horizontal component of a vector a is given by ax is equal to a cos theta. Then what about vix? Yes, vix is equal to vi cos theta. We replace vix by vi cos theta. What about ax? Since vx remains constant throughout the flight, therefore ax is equal to 0, which gives x is equal to vi cos theta multiplied by t. This is our equation A. Now we take an example here. Suppose vi is equal to 20 meter per second, theta is equal to 30 degree and it takes 1 second to reach the point B, then x is equal to 20 multiplied by cos of 30 multiplied by 1. Now the value of cos 30 is equal to 0 0.866, thus x is equal to 20 multiplied by 0 0.866 multiplied by 1. So x comes out to be 17.3 meter. This means that its horizontal displacement after one second will be 17.3 meter. Now for displacement along vertical direction, S is replaced by vertical displacement Y, VI by VIY and A by AY. Again VIY is equal to VI sin theta, but here AY is important. Since football is decelerated under the action of gravitational force while moving upward, therefore Ay is equal to minus g. Putting these values, we get y is equal to vi sin theta into t plus half into minus g into t square. Now taking minus out of the bracket, we have y is equal to vi sin theta into t minus half g t square this is our equation B. Again taking the same values that is vi is equal to 20 meter per second, theta is equal to 30 degree and t is equal to 1 second, putting all these values in this equation we get y is equal to 5.1 meter. Now we take the equation of velocity along horizontal direction. Vf is equal to vi plus at. Final velocity Vf is replaced by Vx, initial velocity Vi by Vix and acceleration A by Ax. We have Vx is equal to Vix plus Ax multiplied by t. We know that Vix is equal to Vi cos theta and what about Ax? Yes, Ax is equal to 0. Therefore, Vx is equal to vi cos theta and this is our equation c. Taking the same values, for example, vi is equal to 20 meter per second and angle theta is equal to 30 degree, we have vx is equal to 
20 multiplied by cos of 30, the value of cos of 30 is 0.866, therefore Vx comes out to be 17.3 meter per second. Please note that both initial velocity Vi and angle of projection theta are constant. Therefore, the horizontal component of velocity will remain 17.3 meter per second throughout the flight and that is what we have said in the definition of projectile motion. Guys, over. You have seen a very successful high jump. The player has every reason to be happy, but our job is to find out that what type of this trajectory was. It was a parabolic path. The mathematical expression for parabola is y is equal to ax minus bx square. If somehow we prove that equation of motion of projectile is of this form, we will actually prove that the path of projectile is parabola. In the equation a and b are constants where x and y are variables. What is x? Horizontal displacement. What is y? Vertical displacement. Recall the values of x and y given by equation A and equation B. From equation A, we find the value of t, that is t is equal to x over vi cos theta. Putting the value of t in equation B, we have y is equal to vi sin theta multiplied by x over vi cos theta minus half into g into t square, that is x square over vi square cos square theta. Here vi is cancelled with this vi and we are left with y is equal to sin theta over cos theta multiplied by x minus half into g over vi square cos square theta into x square. Now by trigonometry you know that sin theta over cos theta is equal to yes tan theta. So y is equal to tan theta multiplied by x minus 1 by 2 into g over vi square cos square theta into x square. Put the pressure now back look on this try. He fails to cross over the bar. After realizing that he is going to touch the bar, can he change his initial velocity vi or angle of projection theta? Certainly not. Therefore, we can put tan theta is equal to some constant a and 1 by 2 g over vi square cos square theta is equal to some constant b. Putting these values, we get y is equal to ax minus bx square. This proves that path of projectile is parabola. Watch the projectile motion of the cricket ball. We will find out its time to reach the maximum height and the total time of its flight. First, we decide which of the four equations is applicable here x is equal to vi cos theta into t, y is equal to vi sin theta into t minus half g into t square, vx is equal to vi cos theta, vf is equal to vi sin theta minus g into t. Please note that only initial velocity vi and launching angle theta are known. Horizontal displacement x and vertical displacement y are unknown. Therefore, equation A and equation B are not applicable here. Time t is not a factor of third equation c. Then the only option left is the fourth equation d. Vy is equal to Vi sine theta minus g into t. Just recall that value of vertical velocity Vy is zero at the highest point. Thus, Vy is equal to 0. 0 is equal to Vi sine theta minus g into t. We take g into t on the left hand side. g into t is equal to Vi sine theta and t is equal to Vi sine theta divided by g. Let the initial velocity of the ball be 42 meters per second. An angle of projection be 45 degrees. Then t is equal to 42 into sine 45 divided by 9.8, which is equal to 42 into 0 0.707 divided by 9.8, which is equal to 3 seconds. 
you will agree with me that the time to reach the maximum height is equal to the time taken by the ball to move from the point of maximum height to the landing point. If we denote the total time by the capital T, then capital T is equal to T plus T. Putting the value of small t, we get total time is equal to 2vi sine theta divided by g. In this case, the total time of flight will be 6 seconds. So the fielder could not estimate the total time of flight. Otherwise, raising finger of the umpire would have shown the batsman the path to pavilion. In order to find out the maximum height reached by the ball, again look at four equations. The last two equations deal with the velocity and not displacement. But our problem is to find out vertical displacement. So what is your choice? Of course, same is ours. y is equal to vi sine theta into t minus half g into t square. Here t is a time to reach maximum height and is given by capital T is equal to vi sine theta divided by g. Also put y is equal to h, which is in notation for maximum height. We get h is equal to vi sine theta into vi sine theta divided by g minus half g into vi square sine square theta divided by g square. After simplification, we get h is equal to vi square sine square theta divided by 2g. Let vi is equal to 20 meters per second and theta be 45 degrees. Then h is equal to 20 square into 0 0.707 square divided by 2 into 9.8, which is equal to 10.2 meters. What happens if the angle of projection would be 80 degrees? h is equal to 20 square into sine 80 square divided by 2 into 9.8, which is equal to 19.8 meters. We may be happy that maximum height has almost doubled, but not the batsman. Please note here some important results of projectile motion. In the absence of gravitational force, the projectile would have covered a displacement of VIT. Due to gravitational force, it covers a displacement of 1 by 2 GT square in the downward direction. The net displacement is given by a position vector r and is vector r is equal to initial velocity vi vector multiplied by t plus half into g vector into t square. Number two, the range of projectile increases with the angle of projection. It becomes maximum at an angle of 45 degree. From 45 to 90, it decreases and in fact, at an angle of 90 degree, it becomes zero. Number three, the maximum height reach increases with the angle of projection and at a, an angle of 90 degree, it becomes maximum. Well, we understand that your concept of the projectile motion is more clear. You can also try to calculate range, maximum height and other quantities using appropriate equations. Now we move to the circular motion. You are already aware of linear motion, displacement, velocity and acceleration. This time, we are going to discuss their corresponding terms about the angular motion. These are angular displacement and its SI units radian, angular velocity and acceleration. Well, linear motion is described by linear displacement. Obviously, angular displacement is described by angular displacement. A particle moves from point A to point B. The angle made by the arc AB at the center of circle is called angular displacement. We measure this angular displacement in degrees, revolutions and radians. Suppose radius of circle is 5 cm and the length of arc is also 5 cm. Then the angle at the center of the circle is measured as 1 radian. Okay, how we define linear velocity? The rate of change of linear displacement is called linear velocity or simply velocity. Similarly, we can define angular velocity. 
the rate of change of angular displacement is called angular velocity and it is denoted by omega. Linear velocity is expressed as v is equal to delta d by delta t, where delta d is the linear displacement and delta t is the time interval for that displacement. Similarly, mathematical expression for angular velocity is omega is equal to delta theta by delta t. Units of angular velocity are degree per second, revolutions per second and radians per second. Angular velocity is a vector quantity, so it must have direction. We will use a right hand rule to find out the direction of angular velocity. Please note that the direction of angular velocity is always along the axis of rotation. Now suppose a wheel is moving in anti-clockwise direction. Curl the fingers of your right hand in the direction of rotation, the thumb will give you the direction of angular velocity which is towards me. Now suppose the wheel is moving clockwise, curl the fingers of your right hand in the direction of rotation. I can't do it, can you? Don't take a risk. The right way is, curl the fingers of your right hand in the direction of rotation, the thumb will give you the direction of angular velocity which is towards you. Rate of change of linear velocity is called linear acceleration or simply acceleration. Similarly, rate of change of angular velocity is called angular acceleration and it is denoted by alpha. So, alpha is equal to delta omega by delta t. Delta omega is the change in angular velocity in time interval delta t. The units of angular acceleration are degree per second square revolution per second square and radian per second square. And last but not least, concepts of the centripetal force, acceleration and centrifugal force will be vital in discussion. Let us try to understand the application of centripetal acceleration. When a stone is tied to a string and moves around in a circle with constant speed, one feels force or pull in the string needed to keep the stone moving on a circular path. Although the stone is moving with constant speed, but the presence of force implies that stone is under acceleration and that acceleration is called centripetal acceleration. Please note that the speed of the stone is constant, but not the velocity. The velocity of a body can be changed either by changing its magnitude or direction. Here magnitude of velocity which is speed is constant, but not the direction. Direction of stone changes at every instant. Due to the change in its direction, there will be a change in its velocity. Now rate of change of velocity is called acceleration. Therefore, we conclude that the stone is under acceleration which is called centripetal acceleration. The direction of centripetal acceleration is always towards the center of circle. The mathematical expression for centripetal acceleration is AC is equal to V square by R where V is the linear velocity and R is the radius of circle. Newton's second law of motion tells us that acceleration can only be produced in a body when a net force acts upon it. Here, this force is centripetal force. Newton's second law also tells us that force and acceleration always have the same direction. I told you the direction of centripetal acceleration, yes, towards the center of circle. So what do you guess the direction of centripetal force? It also acts towards the center of circle. What happens when there is no centripetal force? The stone has moved at tangent to the circular path. Electrons revolve around the nucleus. Electrostatic force is the centripetal force in this case. The other examples may be planets movement around the sun. Which force provides the necessary centripetal force? Of course, the gravitational force between the sun and the planets. Well, viewers, before close, let us have a quick look on the contents we discussed. First, we learned about vertical and horizontal components of the projectile motion. Then, the trajectory or the parabolic path of the projectile was explained. Next, we used relevant equations to calculate time of flight and maximum height and range of projectile. 
In the second portion, the details of angular velocity and angular acceleration were given. And just in the end, we watched how centripetal force and centrifugal force are applied on a body moving in circle. I hope that the program has been of some help in your studies and understanding of physics. See you next time. Allah Hafiz.